Welcome back guys, my name is Ben Selstrom. This is my attic, and as you can see, I have just finished getting a whole bunch of spray foam insulation installed. So these are a few tips for um, preparing for the spray foam. I have seven items specifically that you want to pay attention to before you have the spray foam installers come. That's what this video is about. So we will get started with number one, and that is cover everything. Basically what you're, what you're worried about uh, getting everywhere is these little balls of spray foam that kind of drift from the, the nozzle as they're spraying and they will pretty much coat everything within like the bottom edge of where the spray foam is happening. So like along the bottom edge of this wall here would be kind of the main spot where, where spray foam little balls would, would accumulate. Now the way you avoid that is you just put plastic down around the outside perimeter. Now depending on your installer, you want to ask them, uh, see how much preparation they're going to do and where they're going to put plastic. Most quality installers are probably going to do most of the uh, prep work for you because they want it to be a nice clean installation. But I've seen a number of times where spray foam installers won't get everything covered very well and you'll end up with a lot of cleaning or uh, you'll just be generally unhappy with that. I'll show you a couple more examples. Here I've got a bunch of my tools on this shelf here and all I did is I took some of this painter's plastic and I covered this from the top down so that it wouldn't get those little balls accumulating on it. So anything that you have in a room that's like of value, you want to just get it covered up and you will be for sure good to go so you don't get those little balls stuck on everything. I had the front door of my house off while they were doing the spray foam and uh, some of those little balls actually drifted out the door and stuck to the side of the house going down this direction and there are still a bunch of little spray foam balls stuck on the edge of this. I think I can get them off of there and I'm not upset about it by any stretch of the imagination. That shows you how far those little things can drift. So just be aware, protect everything. There was even a bunch of stuff that got on this light here. I don't think you can see it necessarily <clears throat> and I got most of it cleaned off already. But that kind of shows you how far this stuff can drift if the air is moving in the direction of something of value, get it covered. Here's one more good example for you of something that I covered. This is the main electrical panel. I don't want any stuff stuck in it or on it anywhere, so it's just a good idea. Cover stuff up. Okay, I think we can move on to the next item. Next up, and probably a very crucial item for the homeowner, is document everything. Everything that is in these walls that has been spray foam is completely obscured from view and locked in place. So what I did is I went from room to room in the entire house starting at the very top. I did two things. First, I took pictures of every wall and all the way around the ceiling or any spot where there's going to be spray foam. Take pictures of it top to bottom. Make sure you have it all well documented with photos. And if you want the photos to be even more useful, you can stretch a tape measure across uh, the wall before you take the picture, and that gives you an idea of being able to see kind of a scale of where stuff is at. Uh, I didn't do that for everything, but I did it a few places. So, and then the other thing I did is I went ahead and took my, my cell phone and I just videoed all the way around each level as well. It didn't take me very long to do that, and I've already referred to it a couple of times since the spray foam has been done. So having documentation of what is in those exterior walls is extremely important. So make sure you document everything because later on it's going to be a lot harder to find where stuff is and uh, you really can't change anything so you just need to know uh, where it's at. Next up is you're going to want to block off any gaps or cracks that you have uh, going to the outside or really from any space where the spray foam is going to be to any other space that you don't want spray foam to be. Uh, such as terminations for, this is a sump pump, uh, furnace vents, anything like that. They need to be siliconed around. Make sure that they're blocked off so that you don't get any spray foam going to the outside. So just take a silicone gun, walk around your house, look for any cracks. You can do this from the inside as well. And just be prepared and make sure that there's, that basically the spray foam can get through a gap 
uh, an eighth inch, I think, as small as an eighth inch or maybe even a little bit smaller, where it can spray the liquid. The spray foam comes out about the consistency of uh, kind of like a thick paint and then it expands very quickly obviously after that. So block off all your gaps and cracks. Now your spray foam installer should block off all of the electrical boxes. In my case they took tape and taped across each box all the way around it and folded the tape over where they could so that you would keep a nice clean edge up here where the drywall uh, will be going around. And uh, they did a pretty good job of it. There were a few that I found before they started spraying that they had missed, but generally they should be doing that. You can always ask to make sure, but all of your electrical boxes should be covered. If you anticipate doing home audio or any other sorts of wiring, uh, you're going to want to have boxes pre-installed uh, with conduit in them like I have here. I've got a piece of conduit that goes down to the basement from here. In addition to that, you're going to want to put any extra pieces of conduit you want in the basement going out through the rim joists. I'll, I'll show you here. You can see this right here. Uh, this conduit is just a piece of half inch PVC conduit. That goes to the outside. I'm anticipating um, possibly bringing in the internet through that piece of conduit. It's a lot easier to do that rather than have to try to get um, your pipe through all that spray foam. It's mostly difficult. It's not difficult to drill through it. It's difficult to know what's in all that foam. So it's nice to just have a piece of conduit in there beforehand. So if you are anticipating anything or even if you just want to future proof a little bit, just go ahead and put an extra conduit or two through. Now, my electrical inspector, uh, when he came to inspect the wiring, uh, mentioned uh, pretty strongly about making sure the spray foam installer is cautious around wiring. So, uh, basically the main concern that he has, uh, well, a couple of concerns. The first aspect is that spray foam can get very, very, very hot in the middle. It's sprayed out of the gun at like 130 degrees or so. And then, uh, as the spray foam cures, it actually uh, creates heat. These are just two by four walls, so we're, we only have about two and a half inches of spray foam in here. So it doesn't, it shouldn't get too crazy hot. They're supposed to spray this in multiple lifts. So they'll spray the first lift, they'll spray the half of the spray foam in one, they'll come back a little bit later and then spray the second half. If guys get in a hurry, or they're newbies and they don't really, aren't being careful, they could end up spraying all this all at once, or if they were doing a thicker cavity where they were putting four or five inches of spray foam in, uh, you could get extremely hot temperatures in the middle of that spray foam. So hot, in fact, that it can melt the, the, the outside uh, jacket of um, the, the wiring, potentially, because supposedly the electrical inspector said it can get up to like 800 degrees or something really hot. And uh, that's especially bad for low voltage wiring. So if you're going to put low voltage wiring in the spray foam, um, you could put it in conduit to be extra careful. Or uh, I would just, what I did is I just talked to my spray foam installer before he got started and just said, you know, this was a concern that the electrical inspector had and uh, what do you think about it? And he was pretty fine with just saying, you know, I'm going to do multiple lifts. I'm not going to spray them real thick all at once and uh, make sure, and you know, just by mentioning it, they're gonna do, they're gonna be a little bit more careful with uh, making sure that they uh, spray it correctly so they don't damage any wiring. The second thing about the wiring is that if uh, they spray it too quick and they get too much all in one area, and this is like probably the worst spot where it happened, it's not bad, huh, it's uh, on the edge. You want your wiring to be an inch and a quarter away from the edge of where the, where the stud is. Um, but in this case, uh, I don't know exactly how, how it happened. I could have maybe had my wire in the wrong spot too. But when they spray the foam, it can actually push the wires out of place. And in this case, my wire right here is a lot closer, I'll show you, than I would really like it to be here. You can see that right here, it's only about, mm, if you took the spray foam off, it's probably only a half inch away from the edge. So. Uh, you can be a little bit more careful to make sure your wires are secured. Again, mention to your spray foam installer uh, and ask him if there's any places that he wants you to secure the wires so that they don't get moved around. And it'll either he'll either have you secure them or he'll be a little more careful and just uh, uh, make sure that he is uh, aware of that. As the foam is being installed, uh, just be prepared to clean. 
uh, or to be able to, uh, if there are, is any overspray that gets on windows. I had a few windows where there were cracks, basically along the edge right here, there was like a space between the boards and the spray foam got in onto the window. Just be ready to help cleaning. It's not possible to get everything covered perfectly, so be ready for that. Um, the spray foam installers, I think, generally do a pretty good job with, uh, with that, but just uh, being available for that is good. And uh, the last item is really important, I think, or it was in my case, and it's probably the least fun part of the project, and it involves this screwdriver. So, ordinary screwdriver, well, it's a small screwdriver. It's like a thermostat screwdriver or whatever. It wouldn't have to be a screwdriver, just any sort of a sharp object. Um, and I've got this measured at two and a half inches, and that's the depth that my spray foam is supposed to be. That's what the estimate was for, two and a half inch average depth. And uh, you need to be aware of how much foam is actually going in places. So I talked to a few different spray foam companies and just to see what their opinion was, and they said, yeah, you should probably depth check, and if there are any low spots, they should be willing to come back and fix it. They should be depth checking it themselves, but quite a few guys just just kind of go by how it looks. So you just take your, your depth checking screwdriver. Now it is uh, two and a half inches average, so like right here, <clears throat> right here I actually don't have enough. As you can see, I'm about a half inch short. But if I go up here, I've got a little bit extra. So. Uh, if it, you know this spot, I mark. I would have probably marked this spot out uh, had I seen it during the project. Uh, but you know, on average, uh, upstairs initially, I had to mark out a bunch of spots. Uh, they finished up for the day. In the morning, I asked him. I said, "When do you go back and depth check?" And he said, "Well, it's probably good." And I was like, "Okay, well, I have a few spots here where it was as low as an inch, one inch. That's it, and it's supposed to be two and a half." So it wasn't mad or anything, but I told him about it and he's like, oh yeah, I'm sorry we missed that. So just be ready to depth check so you make sure you get what you pay for. Uh, one of the spray foam contractors I talked to said it can actually cause condensation inside the wall if there's not enough spray foam there. So it's not just you being picky, it's a functional thing and you need to make sure that you get what you pay for. So that's been it. That's that is the tips that I have for you for getting ready for and uh, for just kind of cleaning up and following up on your spray foam project. I really appreciate it that you stopped by and watched this video. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do so below and I'll do my best to provide value and add value for your projects in the future. Thanks for watching and we'll talk to you in the next video. Please give us a thumbs up if you can. Talk to you later.